Welcome garden friends. Thanks for taking a little bit of time away from your garden to come visit mine. We've got a lot to do today, but before we do, check out this rose. It's called Funny Face from Bailey's Nursery, and they sent it to me maybe three or four seasons ago. This is how you tell if a plant is going to be a success. Send it to Doug Oster, <laughs> because I'll just put it somewhere to get it in place. This rose does not get the sun it really would love, but boy, it's blooming like crazy, and it continues to come back year after year. I just love it. What do you think of it? All right, let's get to work. Follow me. Last week, we planted our cucumbers. They're looking good already, but we need a place for them to climb. If I let them ramble, they'll take over the whole garden. We're going to build a trellis. There's lots of different things you can use to build a trellis. PVC, there's ones that are made. I've seen people use these big, like, cattle panels and, and make a trellis. There's a million ways to do it. We're going to do it with bamboo. I have a stand of bamboo, unfortunately, up in the woods. Never plant bamboo. Uh, the guy who gave me this bamboo said, oh, it's a clumping variety, it won't spread. It's everywhere. I try and harvest as much as I can, but I will never get rid of it. Repeat, never plant bamboo. We are going to be going back to 1972 <laughs> for pioneering merit badge as a Boy Scout. As I try and remember, how to lash these together. <laughs> I've got an idea on how this should look. I'm gonna, you know, put one, two, three, four, five, six, one on top, but it's not very well planned out. We're just doing it kind of by the seat of our pants. That's how I do everything. Some gardeners would plan this all out and measure it, but that's too complicated for me. We're just gonna do it, and here we go. Boy Scout lashing from 1972. I'm sure it'll come right back to me. I don't even remember this knot. Two times around. I'm gonna have to go three to hold it. Okay, here are the first two lashed together. I'm gonna set those up and cross my fingers. <laughs> oh, I don't think I ever heard uh, Bones Creek like that before. Okay, let's see how this looks. Side down there. I'm gonna get in. Bring this side here. I think that looks pretty good. Okay, I'm gonna put the rest of them together and I think I'm gonna get another merit patch. <laughs> Yeah, I think so. I cut a little cross piece and it actually lines up somehow, some way. See, sometimes the seat of your pants works. And that fits. I'm gonna lash that on there, although that's gonna be quite a reach for me. And I'm gonna put one on each side at the bottom so I can run string between the two. I'm gonna plant some other cool stuff here too. Some more cucumbers, we talked about that last week, succession planting. But then some scarlet runner beans, which are pretty, and I bet you will make beans. Some morning glories. I love morning glories. All right, so let's get that taken care of, this taken care of, and then run our string. Let's just say that this construction project would not be approved for a bridge. <laughs> and I don't think I would get my merit badge. <laughs> I'm actually starting to get the hang of this. It's only been 50 years. Before I put the string on, I thought, you know, I better put the seeds in first. I'm smart. I'm gonna mix up these uh, morning glories and the scarlet runner beans together and just put them on each side and we'll see what happens. I actually have a cool cucumber in here too called brown Russian. And that's part of our succession planting. It'll be interesting to see how this works. It's actually okay. Like I said, it's not bridge quality, but it'll hold up some cucumbers. Put the string on now. Me likey. Ta-da! That was a fun project. I'm looking forward to seeing how things turn out, especially with these extra things growing up the sides. I have a few more cucumber plants that I'll put in probably next week, and then we'll be good to go. These straw bales spent the winter covering up a fig tree and did so well. I already have figs on that tree, so I'm excited. Hopefully gonna be picking this summer early. But this is straw bale gardening. And in this case, these 
straw bales, I just roll them off the fig tree, they're already nice and wet. But if you're starting off with dry bales, for the first few days, the formula is you water, 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 get them soaked. And I'll read the rest of the formula here that I used. Anyway, this is from uh, the web, uh, Cornell University. Day four, after your three days of watering, uh, two cups of lime, one half cup of the fertilizer called urea. That You need a high nitrogen fertilizer to break down the straw. We're trying to turn it into compost. And I'm using urea. That's the organic version. Day five and six, again, half cup of urea every day. Water it in after you do it every time. Day seven and nine, we cut that in half. Quarter cup of urea. And day 10, you just put on balanced fertilizer, water it in. Some people will just kind of poke a hole in the straw and plant right in that. I've read all sorts of things about it. I'm going to kind of drill a hole in here. I use this thing called a power planter. That's, that's the bulb auger, and I use it usually to plant bulbs in the fall. But I did an experiment here, and I've got a pepper behind me. That's what I'm going to do, mostly peppers, a couple tomatoes in here. Drill some holes. I'm going to add a combination of compost and planting mix. And, and again, I've had mixed results. I've done this before, but every year I try to improve on it a little bit. I think by adding that compost and planting mix, that mixture, that the plants will do a little bit better. These are actually just completely soaked, really heavy, probably 50 pounds a piece, maybe heavier. And so they're going to stay that way for quite a while, but we will have to water in the summer. So let's make some holes, uh, add some compost, and plant our plants. Okay, another hole. I'm going to do two peppers in each one of these. Now, you don't have a power planter. You just use, you know, a good shovel like that. Get in there, kick it apart. We might have to do that anyway if I run out of batteries. <laughs> or if the <laughs> auger comes off. <laughs> okay, fill up the holes. and start planting it. This is a hot pepper I love called Super Chili. And it'll put on peppers anywhere, so this is a good candidate for in here. All right, I'm gonna keep planting and then we'll water them in. The tomato I'm putting in here is called sweet and neat, and it's what we call a determinate variety, kind of a bush tomato. It doesn't keep growing, growing, growing. So I still have to have some support on it. And I'm thinking about putting some vine crops or something in the front of one of these beds, but I'll have to ponder that for a couple days. All right, a couple good jobs done. Now it's time for Talking Trees from the Davy Tree Expert Company. I'm joined again by Rob Krueljack. He's an assistant district manager for the North Pittsburgh office of the Davy Tree Expert Company. Thanks for coming back, buddy. A anytime. Good to see you. Huh. Uh. I know. Sad. Sad, sad, sad. First start off, just tell me what should people expect when you come to their property? What, what are you looking for? Well, uh, my eyes are always open as an arborist, right? So usually we have a, a note or two that says, you know, Mr. or Mrs. is interested in talking to you about such or such. But when I arrive at a property, my eyes are just looking at everything. So I'm trying to pick out things that they may not have noticed that, that could be a problem or that could be a problem resolved. You know, before we started, you were talking about Hemlock Willie Adalgit. Mm -hmm. Team from Davey came here looking at something like this, which we'll talk about in a second. It's sad. Yeah. And saw the hemlock and saw the hemlock willy adalgid. I've been after it for about three years now. When we have a really cold winter, mm -hmm. it's certainly helped me out. But mm -hmm. with all the hemlocks I have here, I just do my best with it. Yeah, you got to pick your battles, you know, and, and say what you can. Tell me what you're seeing here because 
when you look up at the top, it don't look good. <laughs> no, no, it, it catches your eye or an arborist's eye as soon as they would enter the property. Um, we have a lot of decline in your, your white oak here from the tips back. Um, that's a bad sign. You know, if you're looking at your tree and you're looking up into the canopy and you see some dead branches, there's really nothing wrong with some dead branches interior because the, the tree, those aren't producing for the tree. It's going to shed them off. They're going to fall. What we worry about is seeing like the, the tips of branches that are up in the sky. They have all the sun in the world and they're not thriving. That tells me there's either a problem with the root system or there's decay inside the tree that's advancing far enough that it's starting to disrupt the flow of nutrients and sugar, you know, and water up and down the trunk. So they've told me there's some kind of canker. Yes, it's been bad the last, at least last year and we're seeing it again this year. What, what is that? Um, Phytophthora canker? Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's a fungus that attacks the vascular system underneath the bark of the tree. And it's, it's soil borne, so it comes into the tree through the root system. And you actually saw some stuff I saw uh, on the bottom of the tree that I never even noticed. Right. Well, th that's actually a wood decaying fungus that I was pointing out here. Um, that, again, so if you're out in the yard, especially like through the fall, a lot of these, uh, you know, fungus bloom. Then um, if you see mushrooms growing around the base of your tree, that's something of, to be concerned about. And that little hole there, when I yell in there, I get an <laughs> echo. What does that mean? That means it's probably <laughs> hollow. So if any holes are big enough to create an echo or you can see a squirrel going in and out or a raccoon going in and out, means there's enough room inside that tree or that part of the tree for that animal to live in. Or so that's enough, a bad sign. enough animals go in there to make a Disney movie? <laughs> right. Yes, okay. Yeah. Now Keebler elves? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> they're coming to take the tree down. When it has that canker, mm -hmm. Is it safe to keep the wood or do I have to get the wood out of here? With this one, it's, it's, it would be safe to keep this and use it for firewood or anything else. The only wood we really are concerned about is oak wilt um, because the fungal mats live underneath the bark and they can reproduce and spread those spores to other trees. Is there any way to know why this happened to this tree? Is it just where it was planted or it's getting old or it just happened? Is there any way to, to quantify it? Not, not, no. I mean, there are, with this one, no. I, I can't see anything that's blatantly like, oh my gosh, Doug, you did this and that killed the tree. You know, your driveway's been here forever. You know, you haven't changed the grade around this. This tree's been, you know, nothing's changed around it. I, I'm not sure why it's in decline. Maybe you know, the chicken coop we put in 10 years ago? Well, construction damage is a 10 to 12 year window. So no construction. It was just foot traffic yeah. and carrying lumber. You're right. So that that should not have anything to do All with right. it. You know, um, water table changes too much water again, like we talked about in the past, you know, in, in climate. I mean, things are just changing. So you told me that you're at a nursery today yeah. getting some trees. So you're still planting trees yep. this part of the season. Yep. In your opinion, when you're planting in the spring, do you prefer to go with a bigger tree or a smaller tree or does it matter? I prefer a smaller tree. Um, yeah, two and a half to three inches what we prefer or favor because, you know, it's something that goes into your landscape that's established enough that you can, you know, have a tree, but it recovers from the transplanting fast enough that it starts recovering and growing again quickly. But I want instant gratification. Then you can go with the 10 inch, but you'll have to wait a few years before it really starts putting on that new growth and starts growing from there. If you start with a whip, a one inch, they multiply, like they double a year. And we talked about it last week about watering Again, the importance mm -hmm. of putting water on a, on a newly planted tree is critical. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You have to have water on not too much, not, not, not enough, but yes, water is the, the key ingredient for growing a good tree. There's one more thing I want to ask you mm -hmm. about, fertilization. Mm -hmm. I don't think homeowners even think about fertilizing their trees. Fertilization is one of the most important things you can do for your landscape and your trees, especially in new landscape plantings and, and newly established trees um, in, in a property that has been like recently developed. Um, those trees need that nutrients and that soil or the minerals back in the soil because a lot of times the, the soil has been stripped off, the house has been built, and then they put just down enough to grow grass. You, you need to put those essential uh, pieces back in the puzzle. How do you fertilize? A, a you know decent sized tree is there a special way that you do it yeah um, we use a deep root fertilization and it's a liquid um, so imagine a, a hypodermic needle and every pace around the underneath of the drip line of the tree every pace we put in a certain amount of the liquid fertilizer so it um, it goes in and actually fragments the soil a little bit creates some pore space for oxygen and, and water to, to be able to be contained um, and yeah, the, you go all around the drip line of the tree and it really helps the tree uh, evolve. 
I got an awesome construction project to show you. It's a trellis made out of bamboo, and it, it'll hold anything. <laughs> <Right>. Cool. <laughs> Love to see it. Thanks for coming. Yeah, Let's no go. problem. Well, that was a lot of fun. We got a lot done, but I am so far behind. By next week, I promise, when you come, I'll have all my tomatoes in, I'll have all my peppers in, right? Right. Now, please, like, subscribe, and comment on these YouTube videos. That's how YouTube analytics work. I'd appreciate it. Until next week, keep planting, and we'll see you then.